everyone. Today we're going to be going over the 2020 Amy 2 question 14. So let's get started. For a real number x, let the floor of x be the greatest integer less than or equal to x and define the fractional part of x equal to x minus the floor of x. Define f of x to be equal to x times the fractional part of x and let n be the number of real valued solutions to the equation f of f of f of x is equal to 17. For all x is greater than or equal to 0 and x is less than or equal to 2020. Find the remainder when n is divided by 1000. So, the first thing we can notice here is that, well, we can break down f f of x into x times x minus the frac um, excuse me, the floor of x, just based on our definition for the fractional part of x. And then, well, if we look at um, the domain of f of x just based on the fractional part of x, so that is we look at the domain for any um, x such that the, uh, the floor of x is equal to n, or you know, some arbitrary n, then the first thing we can see is that f of x is actually a parabola. And because we have n is less than or equal to x, which is less than n plus 1, just based on how we've you know decided to fix x, then we can also see that f of x hits every value from 0 all the way up to n plus 1, uh, non-inclusive at the top, exactly once. So from the interval, you know, from the interval 0 to 1, f of x hits every number from 0 to 1 in the range. Um, every number from 1 to 2, f of x hits uh, every number from 0 to 2 in its range, and so on. So this is um, a pretty easy first observation to make, and it's actually pretty much all we need to solve the problem. So let's try to deal with this um, nested situation. If we try to look at the, the nested situation all at once, it might be pretty difficult. It might be difficult to um, to see. So let's see if we let's see if we can look at the situation where we just have one uh, function f, and then try to build off of it. So let's see if we can f find the number of solutions to this equation first, um, given our our restrictions on x. From our observation here, from this observation here, we can pretty easily see that um, for each interval, um, let's say for all a is less than or equal to 17, there is exactly one value of x such that the floor of x is equal to a and f of x is equal to 17. And I think this is pretty easy to see uh, from our observation. So basically this is what this is saying is that, for example, if we look at the, the range from, let's say, 25 to 26, that is, the floor of x is equal to 25, then the function hits on this domain, the range of the function is 0 to 26 inclusive on the bottom and exclusive on the top, which means that f hits every value 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on up to 25 exactly once, meaning it hits 17 exactly once. So this is, this is, this is what this statement is saying. For all a greater than or equal to 17, there's one x such that the floor of x is equal to a and f of x is equal to 17. And 
we've given a greater than uh, greater than or equal to 17, but remembering that x is less than or equal to 20, 20, we can say that um, a is also less than 20, 20. And the reason we don't include 20, 20 is that x can't actually, um, well, if the floor of x was equal to 20, 20, then x would have to be equal to 20, 20. But x equals 20, 20 obviously isn't, uh, isn't a solution, so... We can't include 2020. We only, it might be more clear to change this to 2019 instead, like that. And so, yeah, um, so in the end, we end up getting 2003 solutions. Let's see if we can try to extend our argument to when there are two nested Fs. Um, as so. So, we already know that in the first case, there is exactly one x um, such that the floor of x is equal to a for any a greater than or equal to 17, such that f of x is equal to 17. So what if we let f of x equal y? Then we're asked to find the number of solutions to f of y equals 17. Well, we already know... Um, we already know the answer to this. For every, for every, and f of y is equal to 17. So the only difference between this case and the last is that now we have the additional condition that f of x is equal to y. So once we find the number of solutions here, then we can, you know, jump here and have the the same um, sort of reasoning as the first case, and this is this equation is much the same as uh, this one, except instead of seventeen, we just have um, you know we just have y, which is a different variable. So what this is telling us is that for every in order to find the solution to this equation, we have that for every um, b, which is greater than or equal to y, which is greater than or equal to a, which is greater than or equal to 17, um, there's exactly, there exactly 1x such that the floor of x is equal to b, and f of x is equal to y. So essentially what this comes down to is um, what this, what this, what this um, boils down to is, or what this equation boils down to is finding um, the number of ordered pairs a comma b such that 17 is greater than a, or less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to b, which is less than 2020, or less than or equal to 2019. And it's pretty easy to see that we can keep extending this, this argument um, for three nested Fs, because instead of um, just having here, we set, you know, we set f of x equal to y and f of y equal to 17. Well, if we have three nested f's, then we can say that f of x equals to y and f of y equals z, for example, and then have f of z equals 17. And we can go through the same process every time because in each step of the way, there's only one f, and we already know what happens in the case when we're only trying to solve for f of x equals any arbitrary number um, because of our observation, our initial observation here. So in conclusion, um, what we're trying to find is the number of ordered pairs a comma b comma c which satisfy this relationship. And is really just the number of three tuples, three tuples, a comma b comma c, 
which satisfied this relationship. And now it sort of becomes um it sort of becomes like a pretty simple counting problem. Um what we can do is um you know we can obviously the number of pairs a b c which satisfy this is the same as the number of pairs a b c which satisfy this it's less than b plus 1 is less than c plus 2 um Uh, this relationship and because we're just um, because these these signs are strict because we've added 1 to b and t uh, 2 to c here this ends up just being the number of ways to pick three numbers out of the list um, 1, 2 up to 2005 which is just 2005 choose 3 and so we have that n is equal to 2005 choose 3. And a quick mod analysis shows that 2005 times 2004 times 2003 divided by 6. This is, and this is equivalent to 5 times 4 times 3 over 6 mod 1000, which is equivalent to 10. 1,000. So, well, we can go back to the original question. Find the remainder when n is divided by 1,000. Our answer is 10, and we are done.